Hey everyone, my name is Tom and last time I was talking about July grind. Plans kinda changed for the past two weeks, but I still got a lot of done, so let's take a look. And before we do that, please go wishlist New Brooklyn Bridge Tycoon on Steam, that really helps and it means a lot to me. Let's get to it. One of the first changes you can immediately see is the color of the UI. I was playing around with different palettes and I think this one is the best so far. As you can see, it's still not finalized. I got really tired of the gray color. I wanted to give the UI some more taste to it and I think this really works. And while playing with the UI colors, it got very tedious to change it every time I wanted to test a new palette. So I created this little tool that helps me around. I set the main colors on the side and then I click one button and it changes the UI for everything, which is really nice to quickly iterate through different palettes. And the second thing that you might have noticed right away is this weird square on the side. This is actually a minimap. This is going to show the entire bridge at once. It will show all the factories that you have, all the shops that you have. It will show other players, shows you obviously. The way it works is I have an extra camera in the game that looks from the top on the entire bridge, outputs the render to a texture, and the texture is shown in the UI. And each item that needs an indicator in the map gets this image sprite of some sort that is only rendered to the minimap layer, so the main camera doesn't render that layer, and the minimap camera only renders that specific layer. And like every RTS minimap, when you click on it, it will transfer you to the position you clicked. To achieve the movement on the minimap, I had to figure out where the player clicked in the UI, which meant that I had to map the corners of the UI square to the corners of this square that represents the bridge. This was a very tedious task to do, because math is not my strongest suit. Um, so it seems that the X position is correct, but the Y position is not. But luckily, I had my brother pop into the livestream chat. He gave me the formula to map the mouse click on the UI to a real world coordinates. And using those coordinates, I'm able to teleport the player to where they clicked. It works. It works. Oh my God. <laughs> We indeed got it, Solar. We got it. Next, I added more content to the game, or meat if you like. There is now an option to get hot dogs in the game. And look who's making a comeback. I'm using the Sinti hot dog character for this. I'm gonna animate it obviously, and I'm gonna fix the animation of the closing and opening of the shop. The hot dog stand now requires a new ingredient, so I added hot dog as an ingredient to the game, and I needed a place to produce these hot dogs. It made sense that the hot dogs would be produced in the meat factory. So now there is an option to change between what the factory is producing. A meat factory can produce hot dogs and it can produce meat. And later on, other factories will also have different options like that. Speaking of hot dog stands, I also added a lemonade stand. So the same way as the hot dog required a new ingredient, the lemonade requires an ingredient as well. Fruits are going to be produced in the fruits form. Later on, there are going to be other options to produce different types of fruits for, I don't know, I haven't decided yet, but probably something like smoothies or something like that. So these two are going to be the starter points in the game. So new players will start with these small booths. Maybe they will be upgradable to something bigger. And these shops are going to be a more complex unit in the game. I also did a big refactoring in the game. Previously, the way the shops were set up, each shop had its own instance. That instance had all the logic, the stats view, the shop model. When I was reworking the stats view, I realized that I will have to change it for each shop. And it was very tedious to do. And right now I only have 5 shops. Later on, maybe when I have, I don't know, 10, 20 of them and I want to change something, I'll have to do it for each shop individually. So I separated the global logic of the shop and its individual components. Which means, the generic shop logic, the stats view, all of that is one instance. The model of the shop and its specific configs are separate. So now when I'm spawning a shop, I'm spawning that instance of the logic. And on top of that, I add the shop specific stuff. Now, if I want to change something in the shop logic, I need to do that in one place and not all of them individually. The last thing I'm going to talk about is the research tree. 
or system or bush. A research tree like start from one and then branches out. But in my case, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be something like this. And there's going to be a few entries and it's going to be branching out, you know, something. So it's a it's a bush. Research. Bush. Similarly to Rise of Industry, in New Brooklyn Bridge Tycoon, you'll be researching ingredients. Those ingredients will unlock their corresponding items. For example, the pizza. In order to sell the pizzas to the customers, you need a pizzeria. In order to produce pizzas, you need a pizza assembler. The player will research the pizza ingredient. In return, will unlock all these corresponding items. And for example, with the meat factory. So in the beginning of the game, you will have only the hot dog. Later on, once you research the burgers, a new option will be added to the meat factory and now you'll be able to produce meat. I made the system, everything is working, but it's still not implemented in the game. I still don't know how complex the tree is gonna be, what are the requirements for each items, so I decided not to focus on the UI. I made the system work, once I'm ready for that, I'll have all my components ready. Uh, we go here, we here, this is locked, cool. I said click on the button, one, two, three, research, Research auto is complete. We go back here and it's unlocked. Okay, cool. It works. So those were the big changes from the past two weeks. I also did a small play test, took a lot of notes. I have some stuff to work on. Bug fixes, of course, a lot of mugs. Um, but yeah, this was pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Please go wishlist New Broken Bridge Tycoon on Steam and I will see you next time.